welcome to the most professional thing that ever professioned in the history of the professional craft. No, not that one. Uh, we are, we are the uh, delayed podcast until the uh, uh, further in the year due to customer unsatisfaction, just like Suicide Squad. Oh. Hack the Dino. Oh. I've been rehearsing that for so long, and I trum trumbled all over it. <laughs> you, you still are, mate. Trumbled. trumbled. What's a tr trumble? I'm going to Google what a trumble is. What is a trumble? Sounds like an 80s cartoon show. It's like a trumble, it's a but trumbling, fun. Trumbling, bumbling, all of the day. Oh. Trumble, wumble, bumble, bumble, lumble, bumble. Literally, so the, if you Google search trumble, it just comes up with 25 pictures of old white men. Sweet. I'm definitely a trumble then. Anyway, I'm also known as Ben Rosenthal, and I am joined by a voice that hasn't been here in quite a while. Floppy, how's it been? <laughs> it's not been not bad, mate. I'm Give you the give you the hot tip. I'm really they right are here now. The Millennial Falcon, aka the Engaged One, Aww. Brayden Dixon. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody's I've, getting I've me. Been away and yeah, getting engaged, which is fun. Uh, getting engaged. Got, Got engaged. engaged. Getting engaged. No. Getting but, married eventually. I saw so. the photos. Yeah, looked, it looked lovely, cute. very very romantic. Yeah, in the the uh, the not packed theater of Hamilton. Was it actually packed? No, well, no, it was. It was it eventually got packed. I was right. gonna say, was it just not? If you turned around, was it just like four hundred thousand no. people waiting to be able to sit down just for no, you to get your photo? But, uh, <laughs> we did. We did get a small round of applause and a cheer, which was quite cute. Oh, that's from, awesome! Like the amount of people that were in there. Um, but no, it was really nice. And you got shared on in their Instagram. Yeah, they messaged us and they were like, hey, this is really cute. We're sorry we missed it like on the night. Like, oh, Hamilton share shared out? it? Yeah, they shared it on Hamilton. You Australia. should have done it in the middle of the show. That would have been Just a to upstage really them. big flex. On stage. Honestly, I don't think I could have. That show was so good. Really? Like, oh. I've heard so many good things. I still have not watched it. Uh, yeah, just watch it on Disney+. Plus. But then if you can, see it in person because it's great. Watch it on Disney+. Plus. But keep in mind, just as Brad and I were discussing before the show, mm -hmm. that... Uh, Aaron Burr is actually what Hamilton is made out to be. <laughs> yeah, Burr was actually a really good guy, and Hamilton was a right wing, yeah. uh, uh, nasty person. So go enjoy the musical and like really enjoy it, experience it, and be like, "Wow, that was great!" But fun. don't hate on Burr. And then afterwards, go read up on the history and be like, "Wow, this is nuts." Mm -hmm. um, speaking of old white men, Floppy. Yes, mate. Hey, how are you today? Oh, I'm sore, tired, and grumpy. <laughs> but. You know, you are in that uh, main group demographic, so everyone can listen to you and uh, understand. And yeah, everyone will listen every... to me and give me sympathy because yeah. I'm an old white man. Exactly. With just such lovely hair. No, so... the Oscars are on my I, I literally said to Braden the other day, he said, you know what, man? I'm super tired. I've had a shitty day. But man, my hair is good today. Your hair <laughs> always look. I, I just cannot get over the amount of wonderful hairstyles I'm surrounded by. Well, you know what? If you blew, blow dried your hair. I do. Just not this one. Maybe not as hard, because then it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my secret revealed. Oh, bless. I, uh, he hit the turbo at all. <laughs> I may have told this, uh, this, this uh, one-liner last show, but Braden hasn't heard it, so I'll do it again. Uh, when I was going for my third Dan uh, karate certificate. Oh, you do karate? I do karate. Didn't oh. you know I do karate? Yes, you third do, Dan. Sorry, man. I think it's karate. No, it's not. Kara, kara, karate. Karate. Empty hand. Karate. Uh, so when I was doing that... Uh, I, there's an old photo of when I started uh, 11 years ago. So I had hair, Yep. you know, clean shaven, had hair. Uh, and the sensei who was sitting there go, made a joke, oh, this doesn't look like you. And I said, no, it's just upside down. <laughs> good response. Yeah. Maybe you should grow your beard long and get response. a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That Speak always looks good. Speaking of comb overs, Anto. Oh! <laughs> Oh. Wait, oh. I'm not done yet. Anto, what do you think of comb overs? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good recovery. Um, I can't say I know many people who've ever had one in person. Anto's got wonderful hair as well. He has. Like, you're all very, very testosterone driven. <laughs> okay. That's where hair comes from, right? To be fair, I thought you were going to introduce me as the old, old white guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's getting off light. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just getting getting roasted for haircuts is fine. Yeah. By comparison. <laughs> so, Anto, um, how's being a misogynist? Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus. I don't even know what's happening right now. Again, the Oscars are on Monday. <laughs> oh, I had to throw something in there. No, Anto. You're hosting not. the Oscars. Is this your, your 
you're gearing up for hosting the Oscars. Yeah, Anto's going <laughs> to come and Ricky slap Gervais. me any second now. I'm going to run up and slap you for insulting my wife who cheated on me and then interviewed me about it on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what is hey, wrong? Do Topical. we still talk about video games on the show? <laughs> yeah, or? eventually when we get <laughs> eventually, to it. Eventually, we'll get okay, there. Fair enough. Um, we introduced everyone. Yeah, we're good. Uh, anyway, on tonight's show, uh, because we're we, uh, uh, grown-ups now. We're grown-ups. Resident ups. Evil. Because we're grown-ups, uh, we, we, we are going to discuss games that you can finish under 10 hours. Because let's face it... Um, Ain't nobody got time for that. N- no one's... Got, it, Braden's engaged. Floppy's uh, a, a single dad. With with a plethora of children, so I'm going to say a plethora of something else, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I've got a job and a child, and I uh, hate life. So, uh, and Anto also uh, is a very busy person. So, we need games that are short and able to finish. So, we've got a list of some of the very finest games that you can finish in under ten hours. But also, as we record this, floppy, I was going to say, don't you and Anto play like Dark Souls and Pokemon? I was just going to say, like, I don't fit into this because I've recently just sunk like 140 hours into Stranger of Paradise. Uh, Coda and I have started Persona 5 Royal again. Um, so basically what you're saying is you're ruining the title of the no, show. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. These are games Anto can finish in one gaming session of 10 yeah. hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. A day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, it's been, as we record this, March 10th, which is, of course... Mario Day. Which is better? It's a me, a Mar- Go, everyone do a Mario impression. Yeah, wah, yahoo, ha ha! Hi, I'm Chris Pratt. <laughs> yep, good. And I hate. No, we're not going to do that. Hey, Mario, we got to go and rescue the princess. <laughs> is that Doc Brown? Yeah, I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> Morty! <laughs> it's classic Doc Luigi Brown Day, that TV show. <laughs> Floppy, Mario, do it. Do it. I'm do- I am. I'm doing Mario Wah-ha! with good hair. Mamma mia. No, I refuse to do it. Can you imagine if Charles Martinet did that entire movie? Oh my God, movie? I would... No. Nah. My eyes would bleed. I don't think you understand how I relieved I am that. that it's Chris Pratt doing it and not him. No, nah, I kind of want that. I would have been all for him just not speaking and everyone else doing the exposition and him just responding with That's noises. what they need to do when they do the Zelda show. <laughs> Which, uh, uh, there's heavy rumours that we're getting Zelda Lego. Oh yeah, heavy rumors. Cool. Like the, I saw a prototype of the Deku tree. Oh, with a little link. Well, I think I saw leaked photos of this too. Yeah, I think we shared it on the Discord. I but you can join if you head on, <laughs> if you head on over to hackthedino.com, You can find our Discord and join for free. Mm. Uh, you can also find us on all podcast apps where you can leave a nice little five star review if you're on Spotify and and be sure to jump on into uh, the Discord and let us know that you gave us a five star review and we'll give you a little bit of a shout out. Do you know I looked and we've got uh, a fair amount of reviews there. I was actually quite quite chuffed. Guess what our star rating is. Brayden, what, what would you say out of five stars our star rating is? And which one's good, five or none? Five is good. All right. Uh, I'm none. Gonna, I'm going to say a solid uh, 3.85. Right, right. Uh, and uh, Floppy, what, what do you think our star rating on Spotify is at the moment? <sighs> Correct. Uh, Anto? <laughs> Not to belabor the whole bit, but does it go in increments or is it just whole numbers until it hits another whole number? No, it's in increments. Okay, 4.36. It's 4.9. That's Damn. not bad. Which means out of the uh, plethora of reviews we've got, someone went, nah, four stars. So, <laughs> so it, what it means is we've all done five stars and someone <laughs> that actually watches the show has gone like, four yeah, stars. they're all right. You, you dreaming? <laughs> four, okay. Oh, anyway, okay. We, we should we should probably crack on. To, there are uh, video games that exist, right, still? Uh, eventually. something? <laughs> Resident Evil. Floppy. Yes, mate. What, what you what you what you been playing? Well, what speaking of video games, right? Oh, wow! Video games. I played one. Uh, I am uh, still cracking on with Dead Space at the moment. Uh, that is still going, but I've talked about that a fair bit. Uh, I'm still really enjoying it. Still terrifying me mm. on a nightly basis. Uh, but I did pick up Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Nice. Hey. And this has become my lunchtime game at at work. That's so I sit down, I have something to eat, I sometimes put on a little podcast and I sit back in my chair in the corner of my little eating area and play some Kirby. And it's great because it's just nice and easy and fun. Just a fun time. It is. Oh, it's just good. It's achievable. I don't get frustrated because um, it's Kirby. It's mm-hmm. achievable. It's always achievable. Yep. I don't think it's possible to fail. Can you still cheese it? Can you just like float to the top of the screen and go across? You can in a lot of areas. Absolutely. But you miss out on a lot of cool stuff. 
Mm. I like the little secrets and things. And I, I really do enjoy the Kirby games. I, I like that they're not that challenging, but I like how fun they are. I like how they're sort of making a real return recently. Like, Yeah, with Forgotten Land, which was really cool. I Kirby. feel like there was a long time there where I was hearing nothing positive you know, about Kirby at all. You can get Kirby plushes. Oh, I, uh, I, I want to say I do, but I might not. I might just be imagining that. You can get a Kirby plush. It's pretty cool. It's on Ben's Etsy. Yeah. Um, $69.99. <laughs> and it's just a car with like a marshmallow stretched across it. Oh, gross. Um, now, did you play this on Wii? I did not. I didn't either, so I don't know how Same different... Same with everyone or I, else. I feel like it's... Is it just a port? It is a straight port. It's a it's port a, with di- like a bonus bit at the end. It's yeah. a great game. Like, it's it's a well put together. The levels are interesting. Oh my God. So many great games on the Wii U. Incidentally, I read an article during the week that by not using your Wii U, you can brick it. <laughs> oh. There's something in the internals there. If you don't play it, yeah, it, it can brick the console so and not work. What anymore. you're saying is the the console gets the shits on for not being used. Yeah, basically, yeah. And and cracks a tanty. The? Wow. But yeah, that's there what I've go. been playing. That's been my my fun time lunchtime game. Fun time lunchtime. Fun yeah, time that's lunchtime. what I'm calling Ooh, it now. Oh, Floppy's fun time lunchtime. Floppy, what have you been having a bite out of this week? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Cheesy. Well, I'm uh, I'm an elderly man. I have to. I have to. Anto, I've sent a link in the Discord. Please check it out. Oh god! In the meantime, ah! what? Ah! We can see it. They can't. Oh, so okay. I just okay. at nothing. It's all right, everyone. <laughs> they just saw us go. <laughs> 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 uh, I've been keen to see what you think of this game. To be honest, uh, Braden. Oh me. Oh, yeah. what's this? Oh god! Look at those plushies. Look at Carby. Why up do there. they all look like ham from Toy Story? Oh god, they do. <laughs> Why is there a big Carby and a little Carby? And an even littler Carby? Well, Who, when two Carbys really like each other. On the right-hand side, <laughs> what elderly grandma did, did Kirby swallow? Oh, no. Oh, oh. bless. Anyway, Brayden, what, oh, what have you been playing I lately? have been uh, jumping into a game that I've been very curious about ever since it got announced. Um, I think I'm about like halfway through it. Um, I have most of the characters that are available now. But um, I've been playing Marvel's Midnight Suns, Ooh. which is the Marvel uh, strategy game, I guess. And uh, the most strategic part is how you're going to bonk Wolverine. At that, no, it is true. Uh, Blade does want to get with Captain Marvel, and I ship it 100%. Blade um, and Captain Marvel. Yeah. Uh, the chemistry in their book club is phenomenal. Um, what? What an exciting cards and book clubs, I'm everyone. I'm not joking you. When you try to describe this game out of context... It just sounds like shit. It looks good. It looks <laughs> um, good. Legitimately, it looks great. I really enjoy this game. Um, I love the XCOM series, and these are the same developers. This is um, a Switch exclusive, right? Uh, no, this is no? everywhere. No, this is not oh, everything. really? I'm PS5. playing this on the PS5 and beautiful 4K. How, do the card sy- how does the card system work? So, okay. So, you have a deck of cards You've for each opened the box. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. There's, not, there's no buying of loot boxes here. Thank you very much. Um, but there are random card packs that you open, but that you don't pay for them. No, you don't pay for them. Don't They're rewards. Stress. They're rewards. Uh, actually, yeah? I have a really good thing to say about the one way you can spend money in this game. Uh, but we'll get to that later. You pledge um, your soul. It's DLC. Funny enough, it's just normal, flat out DLC. That's but we'll cool. get to that. I'm down with that. Um, so you play this character in the middle of Captain Marvel and Blade. There, you're called the Hunter. Is that Doctor Faustus? And it, uh, I believe it is. I think you've nailed it. Um. It, so anyway, back to the cards. Um, you uh, get random cards. They're dealt completely randomly. You can have a set amount that you select for each hero, and then you bring two heroes with you on each mission. Um, so you've got three heroes you can play with. It, their cards get drawn randomly. They've got different costs and different ways that you can play them out. Um, to start with, <laughs> it's really easy to learn. Look, this game is very cheesy, and it's great fun. Does um, it really lean into the cheese, though? It does, and some people are going to hate that. Why is that a okay. It's, it's I love for everyone. I love comic books, so the fact that it's super cheesy and wacky and like the dialogue is... Some people are going to hate it. I love it. I think it's great. I love that all the characters look like shop mannequins that have been dressed up with like wigs and stuff. Yeah, the facial animations leave a lot to be desired. Um, but, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Um... You run around the abbey. It kind of is combining this, like, Persona-y, like, JRPG, like, build your friendships with your team. <laughs> and they get more powerful. 
And so you have you end up having really just like g- general conversations with fucking that Bruce run Ryan. animation's awful. It's bad. Ignore it. He's springing along. Leave it. It's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> hey, I'm going look, to fight. They make a strategy game. They don't make a third person. They don't make a game. running game. Uh, look at his run cycle. So ignore <laughs> that for now. Okay, there's a lot of this game that needs. For the podcast listeners, because we often hear um, stop making jokes the podcast listeners can't understand, and considering that's how this show's primarily consumed, head on over to youtube.com backslash hack the dino. Look up this episode. It'll be up on Sunday. Watch that run cycle. Yeah, it's not great. Um, But I swear, I swear, every time they introduce a new character and you get their new abilities and you start learning what you can do with them, and then you get upgraded new abilities, and it is really, really fun. The combat of this game is so polished. And easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Um, I have upped Just like the me. difficulty like once or so. You can upgrade the difficulty to get better rewards each mission. Um, but it is really, really well done combat. Like I wouldn't expect anything less from the XCOM team. But like the way you can start upgrading and manipulating the environment around you and each of the individual heroes and how they can really help each other out... It's great fun. Um, and I just enjoy the cast of characters. Like, it's a really weird mix, but I think it works. Um, now, the DLC. This is the perfect time to be jumping on this game because we are halfway through the DLC that's releasing for it. Um, they're doing four characters, each with their own little set of story missions that play into their own vampire storyline that's going on. There's vampires, there's Mephisto, there's a whole bunch of shit that's happening. But, uh, so the first one to release was Deadpool, um, which is great and very funny. It's very meta, of course. And Does then he break the fourth wall? The best part about it, the DLC, he breaks the fourth wall. Uh, not as much as you'd expect. Like, not in a really... A little bit goes a long way. way. Um, but uh, uh, they are introducing these DLC expansions in the middle of the story. Like, so you, as you're playing along, you don't have to get to the very end of the game and finish the campaign before you get to play with Deadpool or Venom who has just been released. Um, You get their missions and their story weaved throughout, which is great. Um, So two of them are out at the moment, uh, Deadpool and Venom. Uh, The Venom one's really interesting so far as well. Um, And then the next two are Morbius and Storm. One of those characters is interesting. It's a weird... And the other one is Morbius. It's a weird mix... Is it Mohawk Storm? I don't. Uh, that's a nineteen eighties Mohawk Storm. Yeah, she recently got her Mohawk back in the comics. Oh, really? Look, kick ass. Um, Storm nice. needs to have a Mohawk. Oh, also, time. like shout out to uh, obviously you get a bunch of different costumes and different uh, colors and stuff that you can change their suits into. So you make the team look exactly how you want them. So if you want everyone to be running around in bright hot pink, you can do that. Um, I've got all of mine really aesthetically matching the whole like black, white, and gold of all of them. So they look like you've got X Men really Noir. Good. Um, but also they get different costumes um, depending on uh, when they're just hanging out at the Abbey as well. So they they can just like have you can have Deadpool in a like bright tie dye shirt with a unicorn on it, or you can have Spidey walking around. Oh, Spidey eventually just reveals himself to be Petey. It's very quick. But um, yeah, I mean, it's really fun. And they play heaps of references to the rest of the wider Marvel universe. Like they reference the Fantastic Four. They reference like Galactus and all these big events that have happened. Clearly like Civil War has happened during this timeline and stuff. Like it's really fun. I really like it. Why does Venom look like a minotaur? Uh, Because he's been corrupted by the evil uh, antagonist of this game, Lilith. Okay. Oh, that's Deadpool's wife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, she's a demon, demon... Demon Queen. Demon Queen. Yeah. And so she, uh, you get to fight like popular villains like Venom and Sabretooth. And uh, I, there's a bunch more that I haven't got to yet. Um, but yeah. And they, like, again, this combat is just, I watch it now and I'm like, oh man, yeah, I'd do that and try and get that combo going off. And like, oh, it's really fun. I think they like it. If they released a version of this game that didn't have all the talky bits, I reckon a lot more people would pick it up. A lot of people are going to hate the talky bits. What if they released this game just as the dating sim bits? I reckon there'd be a very small percentage of the market that would love it. That and the pigeon one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Superhero pigeon, pigeon dating. But yeah, no. it's, it's, I really enjoy it. I think it's worth picking up probably when you can get it with all of the DLC, maybe on a deal. But I think, yeah, once all the DLC is out and everything, pick it up. Do you reckon they'll do a complete edition sort of thing? 
Yeah, I think so. Well, I picked it up as like the game with the DLC pass mm. with it. Um, and I'm glad I did because the DLC stuff has been really adding to it. Did you nice. get it at launch or have you picked it up recently? I picked it up recently. So I picked it up, Deadpool is already out and then they've just added Venom very recently. Um, but yeah, cool. it's I'm really enjoying it. But I also could be a major outlier in that. The main thing I've heard from reviews is combat's great. We hate the talking. Speaking of hate talking, Anto. Uh, (laughs) Do you mean Anto hates talking? Yes, that's what I meant. Not hate talk. Hates talking. So far you've called me a misogynist and now said I I do hate speech. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not doing too well. You also called you old. Your your segues today. Yeah, I called myself old to be fair. Um, the lovely <laughs> person paper. that is Anto, who is not a misogynist or a, 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 a hate speaker. Hater at all. Sad to report, it doesn't look like Storm's got a mohawk. But oh, you can probably okay. get a variant costume for her that would have the mohawk. Anto, what have you been, uh, what have you been doing with your, your hands? I beg your pardon? <laughs> well, I know where um, they've been. Specifically video game wise. Um, no. I finished all of Stranger of Paradise. Um, similar to uh, Midnight Suns. Very cheesy, like all of the conversation and stuff that happens and the speech, it just leans hard into this weird sort of almost 2008 era hilarity. It's weird. Mm. Did I um, mention that the magic users have a club called the Emo Kids? That's hilarious. Anyway, continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I killed Chaos, became Chaos, uh, and then started an endless cycle of chaos for 2,000 years, which eventually ended, so it's not really endless. That's a big campaign. Um, it's all right. It was really Maybe good. A week so there were three, <laughs> three DLC packs. Um, this is the final boss from the final one. Um, Omega oh. Weapon, famous enemy from the wider series. Um, I think this is going to get the Metal Gear Rising treatment at some point. Like it's gonna have a resurgence a few years from now where people realize it's actually like crazy good fun. Mm. Um and the soundtrack is incredible, which you know. Um huh, they put music in games now. Yeah. They do put music in games now. Yeah. Floppy, you hit the plus button on your remote. And <laughs> oh uh, he does it, that it's gonna have a revengeance, channel. yes, triple indie. Um, channel. And conversely to Floppy, um, instead of playing, you know, Kirby because it's approachable and easy and all that stuff, um, I've recently been playing. Why has it gone back to zero? Never mind. I've been playing Dark Souls. Hey. Um, super old came out in like 2010, I think. Super old. Yeah, it came out in 2010. That's like 13 years ago now. Um. <laughs> Wait. At what point? At what point does games become a classic? Fifteen. Fifteen. So it's almost a classic. Is that an uh, is that an actual thing or is it's that just a retro. Ben thing? It's I think that's the, like the wider accepted definition of retro. Oh, it's fifteen God. years. Dark Souls is really because like cars are like thirty. I thought cars became classics at the age of fifteen. I thought Cars was that really crap movie that spawned two sequels. How dare you, you say that crap? first movie is so good? <laughs> Get out of my house! <laughs> Jeez, of all the things I say. Sl- slinging shit on cars is the last thing I thought I'd get ganged up on. Hey, look, ben, Speed Race is better. Life is a highway, <laughs> and you can go on it and leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Ooh. been playing Dark Souls. This is going to be the next platinum trophy I get. Um, How and then difficult I'm... is the platinum of one of these Souls Z games? Honestly, not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Um, the most challenging part so far has been the realization that I have to do multiple playthroughs. Yeah, that, um, that's the thing. That and there's I was a lot of grinding of. for items and stuff. Mm. Gross. But, cool. Yeah. Gross for grinding. Speaking of Tell gross. Tell me about the games that you've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing. Well, I would if it was working. Uh, I uh, <laughs> excitedly, after Pokemon Day, decided to uh, download the update and uh, have everything that's fixed with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet now. Like, er- it, all the problems just gone. It's all fixed now, and, and everyone's having a f- great time with it. Uh, I was very, very impressed with Pokemon Scarlet. Uh, this is old footage, but uh, I approve of it. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! I uh, sat I down. Served that person at work. Played for about half an hour. Conjuring remake looks wild. And I thought, this is great. I'm going to go on the Discord. I'm going to let everyone know that uh, the, the bugs have been fixed. It's playing a lot better. It's playing a lot smoother. There's a noticeable difference. This is fantastic. My game just crashed. <laughs> And I literally went on the Discord then and went, I was just about to tell you all that the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's working well, but my game crashed. Oh, bless. Uh, and then it was revealed, there's a slight chance that your uh, game can be corrupted and your save file completely wiped. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. With this new update. So, so what do you think's more broken? 
this now or WWE 2K20 when it launched? So 2K20 was more broken. So we're seeing the glitches here. Like I've played it. I've not had any of these glitches. They got watermelon butt. Um, I enjoyed the game. I thought it was great fun. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's glitchy. They rushed it. They could have had another year. They needed another year. But uh, I've not had any of these uh, glitches that uh, people have had um, issues with. But uh, it's not there yet. So if you like your save, uh, don't don't, don't let get it crash. It. Don't yeah. You know, I've I've yet to boot mine up because I'm scared. <laughs> if you enjoy playing the game, don't play the game. No, if you enjoy playing the game, you'll enjoy playing it again and again because it keeps crashing and deleting your save. If you enjoy playing the game, Arceus. <laughs> uh, that's it. That is a good game. <laughs> Speaking of good games. There's plenty on the 3DS and Wii store, and they're about to go away forever. Because on March 20, those stores are closing. So this is just a reminder for you with all your 3DSs to go on the eShop uh, and download as much as you can. I couldn't add any credit onto mine, but I was speaking to Dylan the Villain in our Discord earlier this mm. week, and he said if you add it through the Switch, you can then use it somehow. There's, I, like, a, you, there's a, like a connecting your account across is, things. There is. I couldn't get it to work. But... Make sure you go there and you update all your files, update all your games. If you got the ambassador program, download your certificate because you may not be able to get it after the doors close on the eShop stores. What does and, your certificate do? Uh, so It means you can commit crimes in other countries. It does. Oh. Uh, no, so basically when the 3DS was launched, yeah. they... Uh, oh, when it was really expensive? Really expensive, really expensive. And then two weeks later or two months later, they dropped the price by $100. And anyone who bought one in that time period, they said, ah, oh, we understand you'll get this amb special ambassador thing and you'll get these games that we're not going to release on anything else. So there was a bunch of uh, retro games like NES and Super Nintendo games that mm -hmm. they were never going to release uh, on the 3DS again. And they didn't. And the only way to have those, ga those games is to have an ambassador certificate. Or have the NES. If your DS has the ambassador certificate on it and those games, you can add $200 worth of value. So I've got, uh, for example, the, my main DS is the Legend of Zelda one, which goes for about three, four hundred dollars just by itself with the Ambassador certificate on it. It's a six hundred dollar console. Damn. But would you sell it? No, never. Then don't matter. Would you sell it? You've seen my games, right? I don't sell anything. If it's got Nintendo, you on it. You no, you know what you sell? sell you sell me copies of games I've already got. <laughs> I'm a good salesman. Um, I'm a goddamn good salesman, <laughs> and I fell for that. Shows how good I am. Uh, I will recommend, though, uh, on there, they've got some trailers that you can download. They've got some of the old Nintendo Directs from, like, 2013 you can download and oh, have on your be DS. So cringy and watch it in 3D. Mm. Um, I'm see, it's I, in 3D? Yeah. I booted up my Metroid 3DS and signed in, bought and got another account and started downloading all the free demos onto it. Mm. Uh, I also highly recommend grabbing the Sun and Moon and Amiga Ruby Alpha Sapphire demos from Pokemon because you can get exclusive Pokemon only through there. I was about to ask, why would you download the demo when you can just get the game? Yeah, so there's exclusive Pokemon. So okay. Ash Greninja... You can't catch them any other way in the game. No, it's the only way you can get this uh, Pokemon through that way. So I recommend doing that. There's uh, also the aspect that you know probably not everyone is going to care about but preservation um keeping these files and stuff active and usable um is important because yep. you know someone much smarter than probably you know me at the very least um will more than likely take all this stuff that is you know active and live and all these demos and videos and archive them somewhere um other than their 3ds so video game history foundation is very good at that i was gonna say yeah. so that popped up in our discord this week which started a bit of a, a thought process is not stuff not all archived anyway no no the game companies do not keep anything so many like books and movies and magazines and tv shows all sorts of media has been lost throughout history because like, people don't all those must, internet job in games we must be in a place now where we must be the best at archiving than we've ever been you would assume right well, there's, again, like the Video Game History Foundation, there are groups like that. There's mm. uh, Alexandria, uh, Gardens of Alexandria, I think, or something. Uh, they're another video game preservation society. They go out and they dump everything onto the internet. Mm. Like, that's what they're doing. They're scanning magazines. Uh, they're getting interviews. They're, uh, like half the time you find all these uh, working documents in the houses of the developers. They just bought a home one day mm. and it's in the, their cupboard. And this is the type of thing they go through. They scan it. They upload it. Um, the only problem is when you have a super rare game, a lot of people don't want to dump the files to the internet because it reduces the value of their game, which is, come on guys, like, don't be a selfish Very dick. selfish. It's <laughs> very selfish. Like, it's not all about money. Have it there preserved. Mm. I like, look, Floppy gave me a look and I agree. 
Is that is that about me? Are you are you attacking me? A little bit. If I had a game <laughs> that was there was only one copy of it, I would happily upload it. I know. I know. to the internet for preservation. Happily. Um, anyway, you'd have to pay a twenty dollar fee to download it. <laughs> <laughs> Convenient PayPal well. link to download. <laughs> Speaking of uh, preservation and things dying, uh, the Golden Girls are getting a JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you wow, kidding me? What a crossover. I saw this yesterday for the first time and was immediately both confused, shocked, impressed, then confused again. <laughs> Here we go. So thanks to developers... Joe... I've seen nothing about this. Is there a trailer? There is. Oh, God. Thanks to Joey Pagano and Chris Lindegren, we'll soon have a Persona-style JRPG starring Blanche, Rose, Dorothy, and Sophia. Oh, my God. Their Twitter bio reads, Persona parody featuring the Golden Girls. Releasing free holiday 2020... Uh, holiday 2023. Please don't sue us. <laughs> uh, and from the article... I can't remember where I got it from. Apologies, webmasters. The pair have been working on the game, which they've dubbed the <gasps> Golden Girls Take oh! Manhattan DX for a number of years now. This is my personal project that has spun wildly out of control, explains uh, Pagano on their website. What started as a joke has quickly spiraled into a playground of ideas meant to explore oh. just how much we can push our skills and retain our sanity <laughs> with our own brand of humour. Oh my god! I cannot wait to play this game. Oh my, god. Oh my gosh. I, I, I would probably look at it but not play the whole thing because oh it just never something. But I know some people that would be just <sighs> incredibly excited We will excited be following this, this game. Oh my god, look at that. We will be following the development process of this title. Oh my god. And Golden when it comes Girls out, take Manhattan. we're going to stream it. God damn. We will stream that. Is it four player? Can we all be... Oh be, god, I hope so. No, Arthur? it's not going to be multiplayer. It's it's a straight up single player like JRPG it style is, thing. It is Persona with the Golden Girls. It is. Like anyone who's played Persona 5 will have immediately noticed like a very similar style of like menu in battle. Um, it's borrowed like overworld elements from as early as Persona 3. It's oh. it's just like the fan who's making this is clearly a giant Persona fan and has gone, you know what? Let's just chuck the Golden Girls into this and I make love them fight clowns. Positive fans like that. Like that's that's the type of fan that everyone should strive to be. Speaking of fans, and thank you for being a fan. Uh, anyone? Yeah. No, no I got it. Thank you. I Appreciate it. it. Just thank a polite. You for being I got a, a fan. You got a polite nod. Boom, boom. For the audio listeners, it's Golden Girl. Would when were you date? date? Says oh. Triple Indy. All right, very good question, Triple Indy. Everyone, which Golden Girl would we date? Blanche, come on. Yeah, you're going Blanche. Oh, man, who, is who, who was who was Betty White's name? Uh, she she was. Uh, 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 oh, good question. I think that was Dorothy. No, no, Dorothy is B. Arthur. Sophia was the grandma. Rose. 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 Yeah, yeah, Rose. Rose. <laughs> Rose, you go Rose. Anto. I'd go Rose too. She's just Rose? the nicest one. I'd go B. Am I, the, am I the only one going for the hussy? No, no, yeah. I think that explains everything we need to know about you. Uh, <laughs> I'd be offended if you were wrong. I'd go B. <laughs> Arthur <laughs> because I think B. Arthur would be able to kick the living shit out of me. And, that and you're really, into that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How'd you do karate? Bondage, <laughs> discipline, and B. Arthur. Um, so being Mario Day, March 10, as we record this, uh, we, we had a little uh, little trailer release today. Ooh. Yeah, I heard about this, but I haven't watched you it. You haven't watched I've been, it yet? I've been at work all day. Okay, so Anto, can you bring up some of the trailer? Honestly. I heard it was really good. This uh, this movie, I'm so in love with this film. Mm. Already, without even seeing it, I am so in love with the Mario Brothers trailer. It looks so good. Um, I've seen bits of this, I feel like. Is it an extended trailer? Just it's an extended trailer with uh, right. showing lots of little Visually, things. Visually, it's just stunning. Like, stunning, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's got that illumination humour. Without all the minions. Um, Thank God. Jack Black is just... Perfect it, as Bowser. Just when you think Jack Black can't ooze any more charisma, <laughs> he finds a pimple and just pops it and all this charisma just comes splurting out oh, everywhere. That's so gross and correct at the same time. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful game. I think all the voice actors have done... Re- I'm not sold on Christopher Pine yet. Um, I wouldn't be not either. Chris He's not Pine. either. Chris Pratt. <laughs> Chris Pratt. I'm like 100 percent down for everyone that's in this. So all those Chris's, they they all look the same. It's a white Chris. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this this movie is 
Wonderful. Like this action here where they're doing Fire the 2D. Donkey Kong. Yeah, they're doing the 2D uh, action sequence. Yeah, that's unreal. Amazing. Uh, they're building their Mario Karts here, and it's like the Mario Kart selection screen like in Deluxe. Oh, that's Jumping on Rainbow Road. Like the action, the way they've directed the action is amazing. This part here where Mario's on his cart and it gets blown up. And he flies off the side of Rainbow Road, but does that cheat where you can jump off the side yeah. of Rainbow Road and get ahead? Is that the same Rainbow Road? Like, is it the same? It's a Rainbow. You reckon it's the sixty-four at Rainbow Road, basically. But what yeah. Rainbow Road is, is it based the same on, spot where you can jump? It wouldn't surprise me. But that would be very cool. This this film is going to be spectacular, and you had a really good idea during the week in our own private Discord, which Did I completely I? misunderstood. Oh, please so, explain it to me again. In one of the states in Australia, in Victoria, they're oh, having yeah. uh, the original Mario Brothers film screening leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh yeah, that's cool. And then Floppy said, oh, we should get everyone together. You know, the Patreons who are in Adelaide or anyone who wants to come, we should all go and watch uh, the Super Mario Brothers film together. And I said, uh, so I, I thought it was the old one. And I was saying Floppy. You thought you were saying we should fly interstate? No, no, I, I thought he was saying we should hire out a cinema and oh. watch the original <laughs> Super Mario oh. Brothers film. And I said, that, that's going to be really expensive. And I'm like, like dude, it Floppy, costs a movie ticket. What are you talking about? Floppy did it's not like, say this at all. Like this, is, bucks. this is me just going, that's what Floppy meant. He, of course that's what he meant. I completely forgot this movie was coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and about Floppy and I are going backwards and forwards. He's going, what are you talking about, man? It's coming out to the movies. I said, no, man, you're going to hire the, the cinema? It's going to cost at least 20 bucks. It's going to... And and I'm then, like, dude, a movie ticket costs like 15 <laughs> bucks. What are you talking about? And then it clicked and I just went, I am the dumbest shit ever. Oh, bless. Oh, well. Anyway, that movie's going to rule. Do you know what else is going to rule? When you can play Resident Evil 4. Yes! Did you hear about this, Floppy? Uh, you can yeah. play it now, if you want. You can play the demo. Oh, I No, you can play the old one if you I mean, you, you can. Want. I don't think I'm going to do it. What? Ooh. Play the demo. Ah. Not, not play the game. Say. I'm definitely playing the game. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play the demo, though. Why is that? I want to go in fresh. Yeah, no, that's fair. Mm. I know, but I'm probably doing a disservice to the... To the channel. Like no, probably. you're saving no. yourself for it. Uh, Anto will play it anyway. I save myself for everything. Yeah, I'll absolutely play the demo. Mostly because, and I... It's it's almost not hypocritical, but like... I don't know. I don't have a term to describe it, but like... Capcom did so well with Resident Evil 2 Remake. And 3. Eh, I disagree. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Do you just disagree that 3 was a no... Just the 3 that the remake of 3 was good, because I didn't like it. Um... That's why I'm going to play the demo for four, because if it feels right, I will absolutely commit to buying the, the retail release. That's I just demos I for. wish developers would put demos out for everything. Yep. Because you never know what's going to be good and what's going to be bad. Um, That's why they don't put them out. The most recent experience I've had with a game that I bought, probably, and spent too much money on, was Biomune a couple of years ago. <sighs> Awful video game. <laughs> Love it. I hate it. It's. It felt weird. Opposite. It was bloated. It was like Horizon if you doubled up on the pointless stuff to collect and do. <laughs> so like and open world lot. games, not really my bag much anymore. Um, and yeah, I just I wish there was a demo for it because like I wouldn't have spent the money I did on it to begin with. Hmm? I don't know. Probably should have played the demo of it that came out. <laughs> there was a demo for Biomutant. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a demo, I would have, but I didn't know there was. Because I played the demo and went, this is cool, I'm going to get this. Did you play the demo through special means, or did it actually get like released what? to the public? No, using your gaming. Oh my god, I thought you said something else. <laughs> what did you think I said? Well, what is we'll it about you later? three and assuming I'm saying bad things we'll today? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> because you've got such a foul mouth, Anto. You just uh, always... No, I just played Anto's it on PlayStation. Really getting it he, he, you should see him before the show. He comes in, he like punches me in the face. And Ben likes it. <laughs> That's already been established. That's on record. Yeah, we've got that on Can't game. really complain about that, Ben. Daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think what? Dylan enjoyed Bayern Mutant as well. Thank you. Brayden. Hi. Have you heard the news about Starfield? Oh no, I haven't. What's going on with Starfield? Got delayed! Got delayed again till September. I've, I read... It didn't have a date. No, it didn't. I read September 16th somewhere, but I think I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think technically it didn't have a date to be... It was just said it was going to be... Didn't they have a first, first quarter? First quarter, and now it's not? Did they not have a... I thought they had a month. No, they just said first quarter. Oh, okay. Uh, Q1. But uh, then, yeah, it, it just got delayed again. Um, it's just going to keep getting delayed. I think, I think a lot of studios are running scared uh, with all these big games coming out and they're all just flopping. Yeah. 
Uh, well, are they though? Well, I mean, what's what's a big game that's come out besides God? Well, God of War Ragnarok did well. Uh, Horizon did well. Um, but they both fell off the radar pretty quick. It's because there's big game every month. It's because Elden Ring came out. I was going to say, after. Horizon fell off because Elden Ring happened. <laughs> no, someone called look, that. Look, yeah. This month we got Resident Evil 4. Next month we've got Star Wars Jedi Survivor. month after that you got Tears of the Kingdom. Every month is a big game. Like This is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's a great time. It's a great time to be... Alive, Jesus. is it? Well, are you sure? Bless. Maybe. Um, I, I mean, you I sound mean, indifferent. Delays for something like this are a good thing, like especially for Starfield from Bethesda. <laughs> well, Starfield needs to be amazing. This this game, I would not be like, I would not say no to it being delayed for another two years. Like, if, I would that, not if be it surprised. means that they are working on it for two years, then excellent. So, can we just go back to that screen, Anto, with Todd Howard? Yeah, just pause it there. Um, that uh, monitor in the background, that's fake. Yeah, as that's hell. definitely not. That is a green screen. He's also on a green screen himself. That is all ridiculously fake. Yeah, look at the light source. It's coming that side, and the light's coming in that way. Yeah, that, yeah is that, that a Jetson scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's yeah. That's all sorts of weird. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Bless. Uh, Why is his face glitching off? That's just Todd Howard. It's just Todd Howard. Just what we do. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with Starfield getting delayed. I mean, I understand that everyone's very excited about it. I'm very interested in it because, you know, it's sci-fi Skyrim, like, oh, which is Fallout. How but do you... It's space Fallout, so... Space Fallout. That's a good way to put it. You know what's funny? I've heard so much about Starfield over the last couple of years that I actually know nothing about Starfield because I've had so much talk about it, but... You Nothing about it. I'm going to explain it entirely. Go. You play Skyrim? No. Nah. <laughs> you're you're not going to understand this game. <laughs> Legitimately didn't play Skyrim because I... It's a uh, sequel to Skyrim. Actually. A mate of mine played Skyrim so much that I just got so sick of hearing the name that I refused to ever play it. That's fair enough. You know what you should have done. Uh, did you play Fallout? Uh, I played bits of Fallout, Fallout 4. You should have played If Skyrim. you played bits of Fallout 4, now imagine it's in space. You should have played Skyrim, but with the Macho Man Randy Savage mod on it, where every dragon's Macho Man Randy Savage. That'd be an amazing Ooh, game. Oh, yeah. 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 And there's another one where he's, every dragon's Thomas the Tank Engine. That's hilarious. <laughs> but no, to go back to Starfield. Like, I hear all the talk about Starfield, but I've never actually heard anything substantial about Starfield. It's like they, they, they say a lot without saying anything at all. That's, yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, they, they did an entire gameplay show off, and. Was I that mean, two years ago? And I think that was like late last year. Yeah, that I think like, it was feels like the two Xbox years ago. Event. Yeah, and like I mean, yeah, it looks like a Bethesda game set in space. Well, being a Bethesda game, I can't imagine it being uh, anything less than ten hours. So here's a uh, another bunch of games that are also under ten hours. Your segues are terrible. You say that every <laughs> week, but you're still That's here because they never get better. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I talked about hate speech before, and it linked perfectly. Oh. I have a question very quickly. Yes? It's probably a stupid question because I'm about to ask you who an anonymous person is. Good. But who the heck is Anonymous Crow who keeps editing the run sheet? Anonymous what? Crow? Anonymous Crow? Someone is editing the run sheet as we go and it keeps popping up saying Anonymous Crow has done this. Oh, oh I wonder who that could be. Is it Brayden? Oh. Well, considering it's happening right now and Brayden's the only one looking at a screen with his hands on the keys... It's I good mean, chance. it's a good chance, but also like I am logged into my account, so I don't know why it would be set to anonymous. Yeah, weird. Who anyway, <laughs> speaking of their things are anonymous. Speaking of anonymous anonymous crows, inanimate anonymous crow. Anonymous That's crows. A... Little known fact: don't have thumbs. And little therefore, known fact. Also, little truth to the fact: they they don't have thumbs. It means they can't play video games, which means they can't play games and finish them in under ten hours. But you can. With this, what? I actually like, what, I floppy? like that one. I like that what? one. What? That was a good one. They are so stretchy. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, uh, 10 games. I don't know if it's 10. I, I lost count. <laughs> there is a number of games. 10 games in under 10 hours. These games you can all finish in under 10 hours. And we're going to kick it off. Are we with... calling the... Sorry. Yes, what? Are we calling these dad finish games? Sure. Done. Gonna, you can dad finish all over them. Games for dad. Oh. Don't dad finish. Haven't we gone on record before saying that a dad finish, as defined by Hack the Dino, is a game where you get to the end of the main plot and that's it? Sure. Yeah. Look it up in an Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Find out what a dad... I dare you to look up dad finish in an Urban Don't Dictionary. Don't look up dad... Yeah, Don't actually, you're on Ben's computer. Bring it up. Do it. <laughs> 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 a 
Okay, first game you can finish in under 10 hours is Gone Home, the amazing walking sim. Uh, you can finish this in two and a half hours. This is a great game. Uh, the focus is on the story in this game. Players return home one day to find their family missing and must find out what happened. The result is a walking sim, but is really... Uh, I was looking at Brayden... <laughs> But really an emotional riveting experience. It's also easily playable in a single setting. There's no Urban Dictionary for Dad. Finish. We are putting that in Urban Dictionary after this show. Dad finish. Dad finish. Uh, anyone play Gone, Gone Home? Uh, I played it many years ago. Yeah? I got to say that I remember enjoying it and don't remember much else because I played it once in one sitting. I remember playing it and I knew nothing about it when I started playing it. And I thought it was a horror game. And I've never had so much anxiety waiting for something to pop out and, it and never kill me. Happened. And it never did. <laughs> yep. Fun fact, I knew this wasn't a horror game. I'd actively heard for like multiple years that it was not a horror game, that it was an excellent game. Still didn't play it? And I got five minutes in and my anxiety was so high thinking that everyone <laughs> was gaslighting me. That so, I So, yeah, atmospheric. It's, it's so atmospheric. I mean, in a great way. But if you don't like horror, this is terrifying. My favorite part is when you're going through uh, the VHSs and you stumble upon your dad's porn stash. Oh, no. And the character who is uh, uh, sounds like a, a female just goes, Oh, dad, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look, hit a little close to home, did it? Or? Uh, oh, yep. See that? Stuck for words. Damn. Damn. Yes. <laughs> Floppy? Yes, mate. Uh, what, what's another game you can uh, dad finish in 10 hours? Another game you can dad finish in less than 10 hours is Portal in about 4 hours or Portal 2 in uh, about 10 hours. Hmm. Uh, ingenious puzzle game where players attempt to escape a facility using a portal gun. Uh, portal gun, of sure, of course, shoots an entry portal and an exit portal and then you get to travel between. Uh, not only are the puzzles rewarding, but the comedic writing and character depth make these two games truly some of the best. My favourite voice, Stephen Merchant in it. Oh. See, no, I like Gladys. All right. I think uh, whoever voices Gladys, amazing. They do a very good job. Stephen Merchant does really get a lot of time to really chew the scenery in oh. Poly Portal 2, which is great. I um, like this demonstration of Portal. But I like the physics engine. Yeah. Also, developed. I got to say, uh, if it's not too much trouble, Anto, if you can bring up the uh, Portal with RTX on that I they've think recently that done. might be what we're looking at because uh, this doesn't look like Portal. It definitely does not look like it. The, the RTX one is wild. All right, hold up. Um, that NVIDIA just recently showed this off when they were showing off their most recent uh, graphics cards, the 40 series. Um, if you want a 4090, if you feel like dropping five grand on a graphics card... Um, this is Portal with RTX on. So I, ray I, tracing in Portal, it's ridiculous. Maybe because I'm an old man. But, oh. is, but is a 4090 like a, a sex thing? Yes. Oh, good. And you can think of that however you want. Good. Um, this yeah, just look amazing. This oh, is my Portal head. 1. It, is it doesn't stunning. look five grand amazing. Well, well. I mean, it's Portal. It's it, it, Exactly, it's still, that's what I mean. Yeah, so the base it. of it is still Portal, but like, it is... It just looks ridiculous. Like it looks amazing. Um, um, so yeah, this is their new RTX Remix thing where they're taking old games. I think they also are doing one of the old Elder Scrolls and yeah, giving giving it a new ray traced textures and flair and it's ridiculous. Oh, that's... Yeah. What an amazing game. Have so. you ever... I've seen someone uh, that got two oval mirrors, put them on either side of their hallway and then put LEDs around behind them to make them orange. Oh, and that's fun. This is very cool. Did that's you break your nose when you tried running into it? A little bit. Yeah. I have uh, a fun fact quickly. Yes. Oh, oh sorry, Anto. Uh, obsession about 4090s being a sex Anto. thing. Um, you say you're a... Okay. <laughs> so GLaDOS, the robot, uh, as you see here in the game, is actually designed... Uh, to look like a woman bound in shibari, like bondage rope and stuff. Oh, that actually makes sense. Oh, wow. Ah. And I only learned that because Coda told me, because she's played these games repeatedly with developer commentary on, and apparently that's part of it. I have heard that the developer commentary that's is very That's a cool good. idea. Hmm. Developer commentary. Yeah, if you don't know they the bondage with ropes. Developer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hanging people up with ropes. Incredible. Be Arthur. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Blanche. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, having developer commentary on it is, yeah, it's, it's super cool. Um, Braden, hi. What's another game that you can finish? Uh, of course, it's it was a PlayStation exclusive. Mm. Uh, it's Journey from the wonderful folks at that game studio, I believe. Yep. Um, uh, Journey is incredible. Is such a fun experience if you can 
actually just sit down and do it in one go. Mm-hmm. Um, it is great. Uh, from the incredibly stunning visuals and uh, shout out to the incredible music from Austin Wintery. Yeah. Um, Can, should I tell my story again? Yes. All right. I'll tell my story again. Uh, we went to a video game concert uh, in the Adelaide Orchestra Hall place where the concert people play. Uh, Tripod was hosting it where they just uh, did a whole thing about dedicated to... Comedy band? Yes. Yeah, cool. Comedy band in Australia, but big big video game fans. Uh, and they brought Austin Wintry over to conduct the whole entire thing. Now, uh, I actually went with Jazz and one of her friends, who's Ken Wong, whose game we'll be talking about in a couple of games' time. Nice. Uh, he's a game developer, uh, ran a game studio. So we went there with her and uh, yeah, went to dinner with him and his sister and then went and saw this. Uh, then we're waiting around afterwards. He goes, oh, I'm just going to go say hello uh, to Austin. Because he knew him. Casual. So, like, oh, okay. And he goes, oh, you can come along as well. Okay. Yep. Just walked along. Yep. Just went up. Happy just little puppy follow. <laughs> talking about Austin Wintery and uh, talking about how they hung out in San Francisco and whatnot. He goes, oh, I've got to go get my stuff. All right, guys, just, just come here. Follow me. So we followed Austin Wintry backstage at the uh, Adelaide Festival Centre. Nice. <laughs> down into the change rooms. Uh, and he's getting all these music and everything together. And then I can't remember which one, but one of the members of Tripod just goes, oh, Austin, we're just uh, going to go up there for drinks. Do you want to come? And he goes, oh, you guys can come as well. Like, just, just, yeah, no idea. But yeah, you're backstage. You can come with yep, us. No. So we spent the whole night hanging oh. out with Austin Wintry and Tripod <laughs> talking oh. about video games. That's so It was amazing. Awesome. It was oh great. God. Anyway. I mean, I mean, hey, uh, uh, interacting with strangers, something you can do in Journey. It is. Um, it's an integral part of it. Um, yes. It, when you played it originally, like... You no didn't idea. really notice it, but you another were, story. You were tied in playing with actual people playing the game. I, I, know this one. This I one. streamed this one night on the Hack the Dino account. Mm. I just thought, you know, what? I'm, I'm just going to play Journey, mm. and someone jumped in on the chat uh, and were just giving me hints. Yep. Uh, as we were playing along, obviously, because there's a huge fan base for Journey still, which is amazing. Uh, and they were just giving me hints and whatnot, and I can't remember their name, but it was on blah blah blah. And then at the end, once you finish the game, it shows you who your companion is, so, so you don't know that the companion that you're playing with is actually another person. And it came up and said, and thank you, companion. And it was the dude who was chatting to me the entire time. Oh, oh that was you. Oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, that's such a wholesome thing for great. someone in the community to do. What kind like, of a little stalkery? No, nah, that's, nah, that's really it, sweet. It, it's very nice. I haven't watched you I on just. Netflix, but it sounds like it could be a thing that he does. Yeah. Uh, Anto, you played Journey? Uh, once, and I think I played it for about 10 minutes and was like, I don't get it. Oh, so. Anto stopped <laughs> believing. The old man gets it. Yeah, good. Is that a Peter Pan reference? No, Don't Stop Believing was written by Journey. Uh... Thank you. Thank I you. was the only one that was ever going to get that. Yeah, you reckon? Oh, I don't Young people, maybe. Anyway. Don't stop. Now, oh, we're speaking about it now. Floppy. Yes. Let's talk about Monument Valley. Monument Valley. Uh, you can do this hour. Yep. Hour and a bit. Yep. Uh, a mobile game, another puzzler in which the player must guide a tiny princess through the Escher-esque landscapes uh, with gorgeous level design and a brief yet poignant story. It is one mobile game that is not to be missed at only one hour. It's by far the shortest game on this list. Uh, so this is Ken Wan's game that I was talking about previously. Mm. Uh, he, well, his, his team won game awards for this. Yeah. Uh, and when we went to Ken Wan's house one night, he had just on oh, his hey, shelf. Hey, you dropped that in when we went to Ken Wong's house. Well, on his shelf, and I've still got the photo, he's got a BAFTA and a Game Award. God, that's and so I just cool. looked in, I was talking to him, and I just went, hey, um, can I hold the Game Award? <laughs> he goes, yeah, man. <laughs> and I grabbed it. it. Well, Those things are heavy. Oh. They are heavy, heavy things. They're about this big, and they are heavy boys. What's a BAFTA? A BAFTA, British and... Uh, uh, British. Something like film? And- Anto? You're British. You're British. What's a BAFTA? Good. BAFTA D's nuts. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yes, that's what it is. That's what Ben says to B. Arthur. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to Google it because I'm curious. Oh, British uh, Arts Film and Television Awards. Yep, correct. Uh, can I quickly shout, a, shout out a mobile game that isn't in this list, but I just thought of off the top of my head? Yeah, British go for it. Donut County. Oh, yeah, that's on the Switch as well. Donut County. You just, you just control a hole. It's great. Donut County is a good Just time. like B. Arthur. Yeah. You, you oh! get raccoons stuck in your hole. <laughs> Just like the Arthur. Yeah, it's great. The whole town goes in there. Full of nuts. <laughs> Just like the Arthur. All right, Ben, do you want to talk about a, 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 seri- a serious game? Sure. Very serious. Very serious game. This is full of serious people. We put up our uh, serious pants on now. 
Uh, you were supposed to wear pants. Yeah, we, we've spoken about this game at length. I'll be back. But there's a reason why, because this game is very important in, I think, the history of indie video games and is responsible, I think, for indie games being seen on the elevated level that they now mm. uh, enjoy. Yeah, I'd uh, say so. Sorry? I'd say so. You'd say so? This is, of course, Braid, which you can finish in five and a half hours. Now, this is another puzzle game with time manipulation being the gimmick that helps you progress. Players must reverse their progress in order to find out how to solve puzzles, making it well worth the five-hour gameplay. Now, while I don't personally like the artistic style, the gameplay in this game is spectacular. We've spoken about the twist at the end, uh, which blew me away when I, I, I finally finished it. Anto, have you played this through to completion? Uh, no, but I do know the ending. Yep. Um, I've just popped up because I wanted to say something when you were done. Sorry. The ending to this <laughs> is actually in the start of the show. Yeah, it is. Because I explain it to Floppy, and Floppy just goes, shit! Oh, yes. Yeah, no, we oh, talked yeah, about it a couple of shows yeah. ago, too, I reckon. You've played this, Braden? Uh, I remembered playing it, like, ages ago when it first came out. And, because, yeah, it was in that moment where indies were really starting to, like, at least hit, like, mainstream conversation, mm. at least. In, oh, in the games. It was this and Meat Boy, industry. I think. This and Super Meat Boy, and then Super Meat Boy another and one Fez. that's coming up on this list, I feel. Fez as well, yes. yes. Um, there's actually a documentary, uh, Indie Game, on Netflix. I don't know if yeah. it's still there. Townsies mm-hmm. just mentioned it in the chat. Indie Game, the movie. Yeah, so you can watch that, and it actually follows the days leading up to launch for those three games. Um, that's cool. Fez, Braid, and uh, Super Meat Boy. Castle Crashes as well. Mm. Uh, so, yes, everyone play that. Mm. Brayden, next what? game. you can A uh, surprising addition, oh. I thought. Man, nah, this game absolutely slaps. It's so good. Uh, more absolutely p- slaps. It does, just like yeah, the it slaps. It slaps. When, when things are really good, they slap. Huh. I mean, I, I won't argue with that sentiment exactly. No one's come if, up to you and you... said, Floppy, you need to listen to this song. It slaps. Yes. Floppy, <laughs> if you were listening to a song and had a really great bass line, would you say, bum, 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 bum. that bass line slaps? You'd say it's BR. I'd huh? say, that is particularly dope. <laughs> wow, that's not where I was expecting that sentence to go. I know. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 <laughs> is surprisingly particularly freaking dope. excellent and particularly dope. I'm, that's um, gonna be that's gonna catch on. You watch. Uh, seriously, it, it it will. It's great. New um, t-shirt. This it's, it's the quite story fly. mode of this game is so solid, and I really don't understand the context of how it got to be as good as it is. Like, in the overall grand scheme. I remember when this came out and I jumped on it and I was trying to catch up on what happened in the Mortal Kombat story and it was uh, an absolute mess. But yep. Like, well, they reset everything they reset it everything, was such a mess. And then they kind of referenced that they reset everything. It's a wild time. Can but, I just say? Uh, great cutscenes. And, uh, I mean, it's Mortal Kombat 11, so the fighting's great. You were going to say? If, if I, I only knew that Mortal Kombat had a story from talking to you guys about this. I never realised Mortal Kombat had a story. Yeah, they have story modes now. And it shats all over the Street Fighter ones. Oh. Uh, as a Street Fighter fan as well, the Mortal Kombat stories are so much superior to uh, the, the... Anto, how would you describe the Street Fighter single-player modes? Uh, it depends which game we're talking about, but Five. in general... Oh, fives was abysmal. But, there you go. <laughs> uh, my opinion of Mortal Kombat story mode is that it's the perfect way to get someone into Mortal Kombat like just as a general thing, like having a cinematic story mode that is interactive as well as just entertaining is yeah. a good idea. And introduces you to all the characters. Man, that and should it makes make you this into a movie as well. So you get the opportunity to find a character that you like the feel of mm. and, and that kind of thing. So it, it helps convert people into just playing it casually into maybe getting into it, you know, more seriously. Which Street Fighter has been historically awful at. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Mortal Kombat 11, really, really good. I'm sure you can probably find it on an excellent deal nowadays. You can and buy it physically for like 10 bucks, probably. There you go. You um, know, um, and it, it doesn't have a bunch of DLC characters and stuff as well. Oh, yeah. It has a whole nother campaign that you can buy. That's right. They yeah, is this the one you can be Robocop? Uh, yes, he's one of the DLC characters. I need to be that. And Terminator was this I one think that well? was 10. Oh. Uh, but yeah, this is a great game. Uh, plays Sunday. really, really well. The story's a lot of fun as well. Um, just, just a great game. Incidentally, you know, before I purchased a... Uh, sorry, the fatalities <laughs> so are on the screen. Wow. The fatalities are incredible. They're great. Uh, I purchased a VHS player. Uh, those physics don't work. Don't anyway. leave it. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? Don't worry. They have <laughs> magical people. It's okay. Physics doesn't matter. Um, 
anyway, the original Mortal Kombat film is on my list of VHSs that I will allow myself to buy. Nice. I'm just getting VHSs. I've got a VHS player. I've hooked it up to my CRT TV. Incredibly slippery slope. Uh, no, I'm limiting what I am buying. <laughs> Says everyone as they fall down. No, 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 no. Slippery no. slope. Does it have to be in a clamshell? Yes. Ooh. Or so you limit yourself to the expensive ones. Yes. That way, I never buy them. But Mortal Kombat. That's fine. Uh, TMNT, the animated. You know how you used to be able to get the animated series in uh, fluorescent clamshells. You yeah. buy like four of them. I did buy four of them. There's still more to come. Uh, Golden Girls, the movie. I'd like the original cut of the Street Fighter, uh, not Street Fighter. Not God, no, I was no. going to say Star Wars original what? trilogy before their <laughs> oh. special edition came oh, out. Oh, dude, with the original print. So, at what point are you selling your house? <laughs> no, there, I saw some for twenty five bucks the other day. A minute, a you minute. Pay to watch them. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, uh, can I just say before we move on? Yes. Mortal Kombat. Yep. Uh, also, uh, along the same line, but if you uh, maybe a parent don't want your kids to watch that, Injustice are really good. Yes. Yeah. Injustice yeah. storylines are good. Injustice stories. I played through Injustice in one night. Damn. It's so the only time I've ever done that. So I think clearly a dad finish game. Apart from, oh yeah. Speaking of dad finishes, Bastion. Now <laughs> this was one of the other games that I was thinking with the indie games. Uh, it can take you can finish it in about ten hours from the team that made Hades. Bastion is a gorgeous RPG notable for its soundtrack design and the multiple levels of difficulty players can pile on if they want to up the ante. The game stars a young boy who wakes up in the midst of a destruction. Oh, for whatever is, I read midst of destruction. Yeah, midst of destruction. I read that as mix of deconstruction. Oh. What? Uh, admittedly tasked with the mission to repair his fractured world. So basically, if you like Hades, you'll love this. This was the one that had the narrator. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's got the really like gravelly Western sounding USA narr narration. Yeah. And it's super good to listen to. And they to. comment on like what you actively are doing. Yeah. It's great. Um, which I remember yeah, hearing heaps about when this was first coming out. Uh, but you can get this very cheap on Switch as well, you, like five bucks. It's nice. very, very cheap. Oh, very if Switch you game. wait for sales, I picked up this and Transistor after I finished Hades, uh, I think for a combined $2.75. Wow. There you go. Fantastic. So absolutely a little bit pricey. Oh, Flopping? Uh, next one on the list is Super Hot. Super Hot. Super Hot. Super Hot. Super hot. Do you still um, got that footage of when I played it and almost punched Floppy in the head? Hot. Yeah, it's probably he loves talking somewhere. about that. <laughs> uh, you can do super hot in like two hours. Uh, it stands out with minimal art style and a central concept that takes shooting and turns it into a puzzle by changing one simple thing. Time only moves when you do and as fast as you do. Such a fun game in uh, VR. A surprisingly meta-fictional story to Super Hot 2. Booting it up is designed to mimic an old-school MS-DOS executable file. Um, I, love, I love this game. I loved it in VR. I loved it. In standalone, it is one of the no, it is the best VR game I've ever played. Yep, yeah, agreed. Um, I think it lends itself to that uh, medium perfectly. But I love, I do, I love the style. I love that you know, white is um, landscape, red is enemy, black is interactive, and you can do matrix style moves by you know adjusting how and when you move. And it in is real life, phenomenal. you look stupid. Excuse me, but I, looked in the cool. game, I looked cool as you shit. You feel incredible. I looked cool as hell. So, sure. uh, so my son and I, my son Ethan and I played this a lot. And he got so good at it when he was playing the VR one because when you, when you finish a little section, you teleport to the next section. Mm. He got good enough to, just before he was about to tele teleport, throw a weapon, oh my teleport, God. and then catch it and keep using the oh, damn wow. thing. Oh, wow. Unreal. Incredible. That's great. Unreal. That's so, so fun. Floppy, what's the next game as well? Oh, uh, a game that I know heaps about. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Undertale. I've been told to play it by... Uh, my Son Ethan, who I was speaking about before, uh, a lot. So Undertale, you can do in six hours. Uh, you should go into Undertale cold if you can. Uh, it would AC be much on. more fun that way, thinking it was just a cute indie homage to classic role-playing games like the cult Super Nintendo game Earthbound. It is an honorary sequel-ish. I think it's um, been proven, hasn't it? Like the creator has, like has openly said. Something? I think Toby Fox has come out and said, yeah, this was like a direct spiritual, like, sequel influenced by Earthbound. Because Sans is based off... Um, What's his name uh, from Earthbound? Ness. Yes, like mm. like his his pixel counts like lines up precisely with mm. Ness's. 
Huh, okay. So if you think it is a sequel to that or just a, you know, a weird game that asks if you'd like to make friends with monsters instead of fighting them, uh, that way you can discover for yourself that Undertale is secretly one of the funniest games in recent memory. Uh, full of jokes and subversion and a scene of bizarre genius that involves a date with a villainous skeleton. Be Arthur. Uh, of all the games on this list, of all the games on this list, Undertale is the most likely to stretch behind the roughly six hours it takes to reach its ending. But that's probably because you uh, want to scour this wonderful little gem for every little secret it has to offer. That was a good call, dude. Uh, that was that was very well yeah. done. And on that note, thank you. <laughs> <Bye. He's> done. <laughs> End of a high. Yeah. Not getting better than that for the next at least three shows. Floppy's off to a cruise now. <laughs> um, uh, also, uh, everyone just raves about the music like mad. And you can do a pacifist run. Well, I was oh. going to jump in and just say quickly, like the reason this can be finished in under six hours is if you just play it like a traditional... You play it like an RPG that you would expect it to play like. Yeah. Um, then you've got the pacifist and genocide runs, which, as they sound, sound like, <laughs> allow you to either not hurt anything or kill everything. Um, I'm not going to say anything else, because if there is anyone in the chat or anyone listening to this later who has yet to play this, just play it. Don't look up anything. Don't look up the weird fan art that people have made, because the fandom for this game is nuts. Hey, you make a game in the internet era. Welcome, yeah. Welcome, welcome to Earth. It gets sexy. <laughs> and weird. Sexy weird. Um, another one I'd like to shout out very quickly as well is the sequel to this. I guess it's kind of a sequel. Uh, Delta Rune. Which um, is free. Which is just an anagram of Undertale. Um, huh. The first two chapters are free, but chapter three onwards is going to be a paid thing. Um, mm. Toby Fox went on record saying he wanted Delta Rune to, to be free because... A, it wasn't finished, but also we were in the middle of, you know, the pandemic and people needed stuff to do. And he was like, hey, have a game. <laughs> oh, that's nice. He also went on record saying, I want money. Yeah, he also did some songs for Pokemon. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Poke your mum. So did Ed Sheeran. So, you uh, know. Ed Sheeran can go and eat it. Just draw your own conclusions. You, um, Anthony's got some, like, deep-seated hatred for Ed Sheeran there, by the looks He of it. doesn't like redheads. True story. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I was born ginger, so... Really? Yeah. Then he got the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> then, no, thank no, goodness, he grew out of that. No, no, like, legit, I had red hair for, I think, the first six to eight months of my life, and then it all fell out, and this grew through. Story of my life. Mm. So, so Ben's only... Ben got stuck at one point of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next game. You can finish this game in one and a half hours. I am, of course, talking about Metal Gear Solid Five. Ground Zeroes. Yes, it's a separate game. It was released Is separately. It, it was released separately. It's, well, I it's know a it was. You can buy it physically on its own, but I feel yes, like it's, so it's, it's a game. It's more like a demo. It's a no, tech demo. It is a tech demo. Uh, but you must infiltrate a hostile camp with a prisoner you must rescue by whatever means you can scrap together. And there are many, many ways. It's very cool. Endlessly replayable and impeccably designed, Ground Zeroes is a bite-sized chunk of one of the best stealth games ever made with an explosive ending. <laughs> but Peace, everyone. Braden. Oh, I was just going to say, I remember when they did that reveal trailer for that game, and like, man, it just looked incredible. I remember when Kojima came out, and he went, yeah, we know it's you, Kojima. Take the goddamn bandages off. Kept you waiting, huh? Mm. God, I love that song. Braden, what's the last game? Oxen Free. Oxen Free. You can finish this game in four hours. Played this uh, game. It's a good game. If game designs to let you choose what a character says, it's usually a stilted mechanical affair. A character will say a thing, you reply. That's not how the teens in Oxenfree work at all. They interrupt oh. and talk over each other like crazy. Oh, uh, dropping holding back from saying what's really on their minds, saying really corny jokes, and throwing insults back and forth to each other. Um, and it is just really, really fun and really real. It feels like you're actually hanging out with a bunch of teens. Um, which... well, by the way, you're talking about hanging out with a bunch of teens and Floppy's yawning into the microphone. <laughs> yeah, because Floppy that can't stand the idea of talking with teenagers ever again. <laughs> I do on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, uh, they have the plan to run off and drink beer on a beach and it turns into a weird, kind of spooky, strange, supernatural mystery. Yeah. And with its art style, it is really really cool that sounds more of a sci-fi game than a mystery it's, it's a mystery but yeah it, it, it's it's a fun time mm. it is a fun time 
Can uh, I throw out some quick additions? You certainly can. Because I, I did read your list and I'm like, it's very, very cool. There is a few games that I would like to throw in that aren't necessarily indie games, but are also quite short because yep. we all know that I like the shorter ones because I, I can finish 10 hours in six six weeks. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dad finish. Uh, Resi Evil 2, like remake. You can do it less than 10 hours, probably six hours. Um or I've written down eight hours, so apparently that too. Murdered Soul, a suspect, is a great game that you can do in less than 10 hours. I always forget about that game. I really enjoyed that it game. It was so good. You get to solve your own murder. Yeah. Yeah. What a fun concept. Um, the original Doom. The original Doom. You can do it in, in like, like the, five hours. The DOS and Windows one. Yeah, but you can buy it. You can get it on a on PS4. Yeah, or you can get it on everything. You can get it on everything now. You can get it on a goddamn calculator. On a calculator, on a smart fridge. Yeah. But that's, like a, that's a five-hour game. That's there is a, there's a whole a lot of other games out there that you can do. You could play the floppy game in two and a half minutes. It's true. <laughs> Which is the length that floppy usually... Anyway. But we've been Hack the Dino. This has been our gaming cast. Where we bring you the past, present and future of video games, news, previews and discussions. I didn't say that up the top, but that's okay. I'm saying it now so you don't miss out on those particular words uh, in that particular order. That's right. Sentences. Thank you. Okay. Floppy? Yep. Sorry, my nipple was out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's male presenting. <laughs> Free the nipple. How, how do we not get kicked off Twitch then? Floppy! Yes, mate. What else do you do? Oh, well, personally or... Video games. <laughs> Video games. Like, okay, you can head over to Instagram and look up uh, Floppy Plays ga- Floppy. <laughs> Floppy Plays Games where I throw up some photos of things that I have bought, collected, playing... Plan to play one day, possibly. Have you jumped into Metroid Prime? I right haven't. Now? I want to finish Kirby, and then I'm going to jump onto Ret- uh, Retroid Prime. <laughs> Metroid Prime is my new lunchtime game. I've got um, Metroid Dread from Christmas last year. It's still up there. I've got Metroid <sighs> Dread from trying to finish the sentences of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, but, that's uh, um, yes. Mortal Dread. Uh, that was uh, one of my recent pickups oh tearaway is nice tearaway the uh the collector's edition it's got the little toy in there so good oh that's an actual toy yep speaking of which i've seen this two or three times now and i'm getting so tempted to buy it but i'm not going to what's that you know the uh the baby mama wii game where you got the plush baby that you stuck the wii mode in oh no whoa i've seen that that's a thing no that can't be a thing that is a thing you're not allowed to do that anto can you please look it up but yeah, you got you got a doll, baby I'm, doll, and you. I put, don't want to Google the term "baby mama." Okay? Look up, <laughs> look up, baby mama. We put it again. Look Ben's up, computer. Baby, insert baby mama. We yeah. Oh. Insert into baby. Look up that. Look up those words in that order. Please I'm don't. opening up the babysitting mama Wii game Wikipedia page. Okay, is there a photo? Baby, babysitting Maria. Why, why Maria? Why did they make a babysitting? But I thought she just cooked. Look up images. Google image it. What the? Cooked that's, babies? That's just a stuffed toy. There it oh, is. No. There oh, no. There it is. That is nightmare fuel. Oh, no. Oh, so I that, don't like that. Well, it, you don't have to like it. That's why you stick the control up there. There's a warning when you shake it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why so has it got serial killer hair? Oh, it's got man. Ben hair. No, no. It's oh. got too much for that. Ooh. Oh yikes! So I don't, yeah, I don't like it. You can get that for about uh, nine do- nineteen dollars. <laughs> I'm tempted. Please uh, don't. Now I, I kind of don't want to. I don't like plush toys. I don't like that plush toy. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, there's a reason I don't buy an Annabelle doll. God damn. Floppy. Yes, mate. Sorry, I cut you off with my doll story. No, no, I was pretty much. <laughs> you've gone, woof, I'm done. You're done. Yeah, mate. Bob is going to have a nap now. <laughs> uh, Anto, what are you? I'm not sleeping for uh, weeks. <laughs> well. In what's basically become a tradition at the end of Hack the Dino, uh, I haven't done anything with my social media because... You have I, a life and uh, aren't a slave to the system that everyone is well, no, this is to. the thing. Like, I don't have a life. That's the, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I do. I have a, a wonderful girlfriend and a, a full-time job, but... And four cats. And four cats. Two of which I'm not meant to have. Shh, don't tell my landlords. Um, I mean, no, he doesn't. Yeah. There's two cats, but they can change colour. But yeah, no, like, my relationship with social media changes on the day-to-day, and most of the time I land on the I hate social media because I work with it correct uh, answer. part of a spectrum. That, that is the correct answer. Um, so I will plug my social media stuff when I finally update my Final Fantasy collection page with all the stuff I've been picking up since, like, September last year. Question. Yes. What is the, what is the next thing that you want to achieve 
in your Final Fantasy collection? What's what's an item you want to find and grab and possess? As own, in find in the wild bit? or buy because I can? <laughs> Say that again? Find in the wild or buy because I can? The, the next thing you want, the next thing that you would like, whether however it be found. Uh, probably the PlayStation 3 Slim Piano White with the lightning Ooh. decal sketched onto it in pink. Mm. So it's ivory. I will show you. You monster. Uh, <laughs> lightning PS3. Sorry, that got me. It's not actually ivory, Ben, you the dingus. bones of elephants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just the teeth. This thing. If I can... It's not worth that. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Maybe not that thing. Uh, this thing. Ignore the price over on my left. Wow! <laughs> it's definitely not that. Is that rupee? <laughs> That's a nice. That's a nice console. Oh, yeah. It's a nice console. It does look very. I like the color. Like I usually don't like white things because they get dirty. Reminds me of a cookie. Uh, there was also a black one for Final Fantasy Thirteen too, which is also very cool. Mm. Uh, but white one's better. As far as the, uh, the that's white real one pretty. Goes, that's super pretty. Yeah, that does look really. Are nice. you planning to display the mantle or hang them up or how are you going to display these consoles? They will be displayed. But I will also have them eventually when, you know, Coda and I get to buy a house or move somewhere that allows us to modify things. Mm. Um, I will eventually have them hooked up and have like a switch set up so that they can actually be played while they're on display. Oh, cool. Nice. That's a good idea. Very nice. Did you say hang them up? Yeah. Yeah, like, like a model like a plane. Noose? Like, what do you yeah. Like a model plane. No, I know, on the wall. <laughs> model plane. You put the them on the wall. <laughs> yeah, like ideally, like if I could set it up that way, like. Similar to the guy who's got like the giant switch television. That oh, yeah. that thing's amazing. That's stuff. crazy. I'd like to do something. Do you know like how that? many pe- people sent me that video? It's Too like, many. all right, I get it. Fuck off. I get it. I play games. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I play games and I like Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. I like the way that, uh, oh, Ben has a video game podcast where he looks at all the latest news. He wouldn't have seen this. Bless. Or people <laughs> go, hey, Ben likes Nintendo and I'm a nice friend. Yeah. That's a lie. I have no friends. I don't mean you with a nice friend. I mean other <laughs> like Michael Towns is going to send that video to Ben after the show. <laughs> send it to him now. <laughs> Michael Towns is the Link type of person the who will send me that video every day at like a specific time. <laughs> Would set up a um, yeah, and, I'm going and it to won't say, be a, it won't be midday. It'll no. be like ten forty three in the morning. Yep. Yeah, and it'll just go. Townsy's computer is going to have a new macro by the end of the night. <laughs> that's just scheduled for every single evening. What, Brandon, what's a macro? What do you do? It's automated when you set up an automation on your computer. Thank you. Um, I do another podcast uh, with my friends over on the podcast services and the YouTubes uh, where we talk about movies and TV shows. It's called Millennial Movie Talk. Um, Mint. You can find it over there. We've talked about plenty of stuff at the moment. Uh, a lot of uh, The Last of Us on HBO, uh, which is, a who'd have guessed? A very good show. Yeah, I know. Who would have thought? Um, uh, what else has just started? Uh, we talked a bunch about the, the recent DC stuff. Uh, cocaine like, bear. Uh, <laughs> cocaine bear, yes. Was that a good time? You that, t- is you it can, now a meth tell, alligator? You can tell which one is the one that I wasn't on based on the design of the thumbnail um, because one of them is using word art. Um, <laughs> that <is so> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So if you want to go hear about Michael and Alex uh, talking about cocaine bear and tar... Uh, that new one where um, uh, what's her face is playing a composer um, or a conductor. Uh, what's her face? One of the two. Kate Blanchett, I yeah. think. How has um, Kate Blanchett become a what's her face? I, I just couldn't get the name out of my head. Um, yeah. And yeah, so uh, we t- talked about heaps of stuff recently. Um, the new Ant Man, which just came out. Is it rubbish? Um, it's. Do you like Star Wars? Yes. It's Marvel trying to do Star Wars. Uh oh. Um, Jonathan Majors is excellent. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Who does he uh, play? Creed three, by the way. It's Krang. That's there too. Uh, oh, Kang. Krang. Krang. I wish Kang. he was Krang. I was, like Krang. I was, I was very confused Krang. for a minute. I'm like, Jonathan maybe Majors I should has watch Krang. This. Multiverse, like, man. Incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, legitimately, uh, <laughs> that, that's basically it. Townsy in the chat has asked you to review Golden Girls. Um, you know what? That is probably the type of thing that we would do. Um, Not even lying, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, we would. What about um, what about Mando? You're looking at some Mando. Mando. I, so ooh, ooh. just watched episode one of season three the other day, which okay. was our last episode. I'm yet to watch episode two. Okay. Episode one was off to an incredibly slow start. I thought. Yeah, you didn't like yeah, it. I liked it. I, it was. I thought it was fine. Like, it was fine. But like after like Andor. Like as a show, like still haven't watched Andor. Oh, 
Andor. I, I watched fast. Andor. I didn't think it was as good as everyone else seems to. I thought it was great, mm. but I don't. I don't hold it as high as everyone else seems to think. That's it fair is. enough. And I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't know if I missed something. Mm. Anto. Um, I don't know if apathy is the right word, <laughs> but like apathy. when I'm not feeling generally apathetic about everything. I will eventually get round to watching a Mandalorian because I haven't yet ever. Oh, okay. Well, season one and two. Actually. You'll love the Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah, my favorite. Okay, wait. I love I will it when be- you say Baby Yoda because I know firsthand how much it pisses Floppy off. When I you don't call him Grogu. <laughs> we'll mention we had a realization. <laughs> we had a realization on the most recent episode of MMT when we were talking about episode one of season three of Mandalorian because uh, both myself and Michael had watched it. Um, and so we were talking about it. We realized that Michael hadn't watched any of Book of Boba Fett, which if you don't know, Book of Boba Fett has a secret, just two episodes. The two best episodes of, of Book of Boba Mandalorian Fett. Mandalorian in it. Yep. Uh, which make up half of the show. Um, and so he hadn't watched any of that. So when The Mandalorian Season 3 starts, up and he ship. rocks up in the nude Naboo Starfighter, he was just like, Which, what the hell? Canonically, was the one that Anakin was in. Oh, get stuff. No, it no, is. No. no, it is. That's rid- because there's a show, when they show it, they oh. show the cockpit, and it has the galactic uh, writing on there that says, go, Anakin, go. Oh, my God. It's the same one. Sure. Whatever. It is. H- 100%. Good for you. Good for you, um, John Favreau. Good, and Dave Filoni. Good, good. I heard a comment. Someone uh, oh, on Twitter nice. wrote about, uh, just said... Um, Oh, I like Mandalorian, but it just feels like some guy playing with Star Wars figures in the sandbox. And I went, yeah, that's what, why and I like that's it. That's what yeah, it that, should that's be. That's what it is. is. That's what like, Star Wars should be. Yeah, that's what makes it be fun. Repeated films about bloodlines and the same family of characters every goddamn time. Well, they're moving away yes. from that. Yeah, thank good. God. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to watch more of it. Uh, Last of Us season finale is this coming Monday. Oh. So by the time you guys hear this, possibly, you... Might be able to uh, go play some that. golf. Can I? Um, the Oscars are also coming up as well next week, so you'll be able to hear us uh, shit on the Academy. Um, if everywhere, everything, everywhere, all at once does not win, oh, it's going to win everything. It needs to. It has to win everything. Um, I, I just went and saw the most recent Scream last night. Is that good? I heard that was good. What are you doing watching a horror film? I so Scream is my exception because Scream, the entire franchise, the Scream movies are so good. Um, and it's like the one horror type thing that I can do. Um, well, it's a I, slasher movie. I wouldn't it's a say slasher. It's, a horror. it's making fun of slashers. It's playing on the whole, like making fun of horror films type thing. It's very meta. It's very my bag. Um, if you enjoyed Scream 5, where they were sort of bringing in the new blood. Was that Billy Loomis's sister um, in that one? It was daughter. Daughter? Loomis. Yes. Um, if you like the new characters from Five and don't care about the legacy characters from the originals popping up everywhere, then you're going to like Six. Also, Six is set in New York, which is a wild turn for the franchise. Wow. Does uh, uh, Scream Face have Ghost mystical Ghost. powers? No. Good. Good. Yes. No, they're doing a very good job with that so far. Um, and it... There are some sequences in this movie that are just absolutely brutal. Um, and I'll talk about it more next episode of Millennial Movie Talk. So, so head on over there out. and do a subscribe. Oh, also, wow. we're seeing 65 this weekend. <gasps> oh! Is that like an early release thing or is it actually out? It soon? is actually out and you can go see it in cinemas. Oh my God. <sighs> yep. So everyone go check out Adam Driver. Doing Shoot Dino Riders. Punch Dinosaurs. He's Adam Driver Dino Rider. That's what it should be called. <laughs> that is what it Adam be Driver called. Dino Rider. Called Adam Rider. Wait, no, that's a different film. Be Arthur. Uh, uh, I I do things I forgot this week, but bad game arts is where I put up all the bad game art from. <clears throat> I'm going to show you some bad game art after as well, Braden. Oh God, oh God. We talked about it last week, but uh, I will show you. Uh, this, we've gone through this. is Rygar. Oh, it's a naked man throwing a... a, a, a Buzz saw you. He is saw. nude, isn't he? He is. He is. And as Floppy pointed out, I posted these on Valentine's Day, so you can know how oh. uh, my romantic day went. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a Saucy. strange penis alien. Phantom see, I don't shot. see it. You don't see it? No. The, the alien with the giant penis and he's shooting the base of the penis. The butt is the balls. So so see the alien who's breaking the fourth wall and looking at us with really wide eyes going, Doi! This guy here. Yep. Go yeah. down to where his penis would be. That's just another dude in front of him. No, that's his penis. <laughs> giant he's shooting penis. it off. Okay. Anyway, uh, look at the butt at the alien in the bottom left. That's a butt. 
No, no, it's, the, it's the balls, and then the head is the head. Oh, anyway, there's that's Jesus bad game up. Christ. Yep, <laughs> that's what I think a lot when I see this, Anto. <laughs> mm. um, well, that's our. That's run what sheet. Ben <laughs> spends all day thinking about. <laughs> uh, and I also have an Instagram over at Mr. Benjamin where I put up all my latest finds. So uh, you can see the Metal Gear Solid nice. uh, thingy that I was talking about. That was five bucks. That was nice. That, that was Professor time. Layton game. Yes. What the heck? So that's I was amazing. I was at a garage sale. That was twenty dollars. I looked it up. It's worth a hundred and fifty. Jesus! And I said to Ben, I said, "Like, really? Are you sure you like?" I know Ben is generally pretty good at just looking at sold prices and doing that sort of thing. I'm like, "Nah." And I went over to my shelf and I was like, "Huh? I've got this." <laughs> yeah, well, might sell this. <laughs> hundred and fifty bucks. Phoenix Wright in it, oh, and I damn. love Phoenix Wright. I don't care too much about Professor Layton. What a hell of a love Phoenix crossover. Wright. Yeah, so I because I've been focusing a lot on the retro hunt, I haven't mm. been picking up stuff myself. But there's not a lot of stuff out there at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, retro you've already because you've yeah. bought it all. <laughs> but that's what uh, I do. Um, that that's that's that's. Can I do one more quick little little plug? Oh well, you know, sure. <laughs> Greenlight Comics, uh, support Dan and I, please. D- okay. You read a good book. Read read many good books. I was talking to Ross the other day about the 1989 Batman book. Yes. Yes, it's the very cover. Cool. The the hardcover, um, the uh, box set. I think we're getting. I think I'm getting it. You are. You're down for one. Yep. Yes, I thought I was. Yep. <laughs> they do a double feature box set, which is stylized to look like VHS tapes. Nice. I don't know if I'm getting that one. You are. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. No, I already I already have it on order for you. Thank you. See, this is why it's good having uh, associates in a. a, a I'm here for Ben. You <sighs> currently have thirty seven dollars in your bag. Oh. Of comics. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, like you owe him thirty seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you got thirty seven dollars in your bag. How? I just I looked at it today and I was like, I'll just I'll should I shoot mess- Ben a message and be like, oh, I'll bring your comics in for you if you just shoot it through. And I was like, Nah, Ben can come in. Oh, I go in there quite often. Talk yeah, to Ross. Exactly. I'm still trying to get his uh, pirate Lego ship off him. Mm. Can you remind him? Because I feel bad every time I go in there. Hey, you are going to give me that childhood treasure you had yet? I'll mention it next time. I see him. We went in the other day and I had taller hair than Ross. Really? Whoa. Yeah, we quite often comment on each other, on the the volume or the height that we that each of us uh, achieve in different ways, and then we talk about it, mm. how we did that. Must be nice. <laughs> it's all right. That's it. We're Just done. every day for me. I'm finishing. It's cancelled. We're all cancelled. 